Verse 14, I'm so distracted now. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Are you forgiven? You probably ought to live that way. You forgiven? Will he remember your lawless deeds anymore? Probably ought to live that way. Sounds like freedom. He who the sun sets free is? Probably ought to roll back that veil. Just go ahead, guys, and be a bride. If the girls are sons, we can be brides. <laughs> Come on, man. If you've struggled with guilt, condemnation, shame, it would be good to go find a secret place today. Just go get alone and break through that lie and believe the gospel. Just get alone and just say, Lord, emotions will rise up. I'm here. And just do it. Just, just, just act it out. Contact with faith. I'm here. And with open face, I'm coming and I'm never covering this thing again. Because you love me. Or you'd have never sent your son to the cross. Thank you. Whew. Take some bread, take the cup. Just have a little ceremony, almost like a wedding. Father, you vowed to never leave me or forsake me, to be as close as the mention of your name, that your love would never fail. And God, even the way you gave your son and you gave your body, Jesus, I give mine for your glory and your honor and I separate myself for your glory. And Jesus, the way you shed your blood to wash me, to forgive me, to cleanse me, make me clean, I will not hold my life back even to the shedding of blood. If this thing costs me everything, God, I'm all in to manifest what you paid for. This is a covenant. All that is yours is mine, and all that is mine is yours. I am honored that we're one. You see what, you see what goes on with me behind the scenes when you ain't watching? <laughs> That's what's wrong with me. <laughs> but I believe it. A believer. It sounds harsh, but it's just convicting. Your life lived reveals what you really believe. You know a man by his fruits. In that day, your life will be the verdict of whether you believe. There won't be an assessment sheet. There won't be a questionnaire to fill out. The way you lived reveals what you gave your life to. And if you lived hurt, then you believed offense. You're not going to stand before the Lord and break down and cry and say, well, why didn't you help me? I prayed and prayed. Why didn't you change my spouse? You knew how much pressure they put on me and what they... You, you will get in the light of his glory and go, oops, I was totally deceived all those years. You'll know it in a heartbeat. And when I use that example, you know you're not going to stand before God and say, why didn't you change my spouse? Because that's making your spouse greater than following him. And you just, you just know that ain't going to work, Right? So why would you let it work now? Why would you buy time you don't have to give? Why would you let it work now if you know it won't work in his presence? Come on. Oh, that's good and straight. And you who were once alienated, you and me, and enemies in our mind by wicked works, that's self-centered motivation, that's not just murder and adultery and pornography, it's just, it's just wicked. Unbelief is an evil heart of unbelief. Unbelief is called evil in your Bible. It's contrary to the kingdom. It works against his goals and efforts and agenda, right? So we were all alienated in enemies by the way our minds were working. And yet now, in the midst of that, yet now he reconciled us. What's his love understand? I created him a certain way. Adam got separated in sin. They were all born into Adam. They need born again. God had figured out. Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. He's going to come, pay the price to remove all the sin, get the lie off of every man to restore him back to the truth. Their minds got perverted. Self-centeredness got in the way. If you're going to follow me, I need you to do this. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross. What's that mean? That means you never let sin against you give the right to produce sin in you. You overcome evil with good. You don't repay evil for evil. You carry your cross. And sometimes you get judged for doing good. 
You take it patiently, 1 Peter 2, because it's commendable before God. For to this you were called, as you have Christ as your example, and you should follow in his footsteps. Yeah? Man, that's good. That's scripture. 1 Peter 2. Can you tell I've read this book? You ought to read this book. It's amazing. Get it in your heart. Fill your heart with truth. How will you ever discern a lie if you're not sure what's true? Do you want to get in a place where it's like... Oh. <laughs> yeah. Let's finish this and we'll be done. I bought a little extra time. Actually, I don't think I had to pay for it. You guys seem like you're okay. But I'm, I am trying to finish. I really am. And you who were once alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he reconciled. How did he do that? In the body of his flesh through death. What's the purpose? To present you. Now watch this. I don't know if preachers told you this. I don't know your background. I don't know who your pastor was. I don't know who you, where you've been. But I've never been told this in my life. So I'm going to make sure I tell you since I have a mic. The purpose he did what he did on the cross is to present me holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. What he's establishing is right identity to restore right relationship, to get me past my past so I can be empowered to live my present and things to come in this truth for the rest of my life. So if he died on the cross to reconcile me and present me holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight, which means it's the way he sees me, if I fail to embrace that and accept that, that would be called pride. Humility says, yes, thank you, wow. So who am I to not see myself the way he sees me through the cross to restore this relationship? So when people live outside of holy, blameless, above reproach, guilt, condemnation, shame, contraire, anti-finished work, deception of the devil, it's a, con it's a quandary because their heart's been changed, convicted, and, and touched but they're still weighing themselves by themselves and there's no chance for change. So they believe they're a failure. So as they think is so they are. So every time they live outside of truth, they confirm their worst fear and in time sell themselves when they're not for sale. So if he said you're holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight, wouldn't it make total sense in the realm of faith to wake up that way? Wouldn't it make total sense to live the day that way? Wouldn't it make sense to go to bed that way? You say, well, yeah, but wonder if we mess up. Run straight to him. Don't call three friends crying. If you call a friend crying, that's okay. Talk to him, confess it, stay clean. But run to him. Don't run from him. Don't draw back. Go run to him. Wow, God, I so appreciate the conviction in my life. Man, that was so not who you are, who you created me to be. And it's not what I ever want to be. God, if it wasn't for the truth that's working in me, I wouldn't see it so clear. There was a time I'd have done that and thought they deserved it. There was a time I'd have done that and thought it was normal. God, that has nothing to do with who you created me and who I ever want to be. God, your word is working in me. You're washing me clean. You are empowering me to live righteous. God, thank you for changing my life. You would talk like that if you just missed it what would you do get condemned lose your identity for three weeks backslide come on the godly sorrow takes me to him the days of hiding from him naked and ashamed have to be over because he ended that day when he took off their fig leaves and put on garments made with his own hands. What's he doing? Prophesying a day when we would all wear what he made for us because that's when we look our best and that's what fits us perfect. Yeah? Come on. So he's going to present you holy, blameless, and above reproach in his sight. Uh-oh. If indeed, see this is where you come in. If indeed you continue in the faith, grounded and steadfast and not moved away 
from this hope of the gospel which you heard. Do you know people go to church their whole life and never hear this hope? And it's right here. It's actually all over. But somehow it gets covered over and we preach, try harder, hey, you know. So it's either real liberal and who cares and God loves us anyway or tight-roped works, legalism, and everybody's on the fringes of hell unless they do better. It's just it's so it's a pendulum. And one camp attacks another and the looser they get, the tighter they get. Nobody's winning and Jesus is here in this happy place going, hey, guys, Whoa! <laughs> if indeed we continue, and you know what he's saying? You're holy, you're blameless, you're above reproach in his sight. If you continue believing that and don't let anything change your mind, that's what he's saying. You with me? Okay, so if that's gospel and that's in the word, would it behoove us to live there, to believe there, and to stay there? I feel strong in this, that, that this guilt, condemnation, shame thing, that you're charged with this today, that if an ounce of that tries to come on your life, I'm just believing God's going to help you through today to recognize what it is, that it's dangerous and destructive, that it's not humility, it's deception. And the fact that you care is why you're allowing those feelings to come. Those feelings wouldn't have a place to rest if you weren't sincere and didn't care. So that's already covered. You absolutely do care. So take your care and run to him. Don't run to condemnation. Take your care and run to him. Don't run to guilt. Don't run to shame. As a man thinketh, so he is. is. So if you believe you're a son, your life starts looking like sonship. If you believe you're forgiven, you'll start living like somebody that knows they're forgiven. Are you with me? Yeah? You believe you're clean, you'll start living and looking clean. <laughs> Yay. Not trying to be clean. Jesus will say, hey, already did that for you. <laughs> <laughs> cost me a lot I really wish you'd put it on <laughs> why are you trying to pay what I already paid for it's free love you <laughs> why don't you stand your feet with me would you let's believe this gospel together just a teaching time y'all got something I know you did I preached way too good for you to not get something <laughs> Or way too long, one or the other. Hopefully you got some. I preach a long time. <laughs> Who's a... So... This is going to be the joke of the house forever, isn't it? So. Who stands in front of people and preaches in here? Anybody? You know what I mean when I say this. You, you know when it's clear. You just know it in your heart because what it does in your own heart. Like, so when I'm laughing and saying, man, it was so good. I'm not, it's not arrogant. I'm just having fun with y'all. But you know because of what it's like liberating. It gives life. The word gives life. Helps you to see clear, right? So when you hear somebody preaching like this, it's never like, oh boy, I got a long way to go. Are you kidding? You got somewhere to go. You got direction. You got a light on the trail. You're not in the dark, man. Bam. And they're like, boy, I don't even know if I'm barely saved. You know, isn't it amazing how we learn to hear? How we hear people say, boy, you stepped on my toes all service. I'm like, that's a shame. I never even thought about stepping on your toes. I didn't come here to step on your toes. I came here to tell you who you are. And you got your toes stepped on? I don't know who stepped on them, but it wasn't me. It's your own interpretation of what I was saying. It's stepping on your toes. Guys, we can live this life. In two sessions, there's not one thing I preach that you can't live if you wrap faith and want to around it. The biggest key to becoming love is you have to want to. You never become love without a sincere yes. If you're still waiting on the person next to you or somebody in your family to change, you're missing the whole point. It's amazing in a room this size how many people don't really want to become love. I've learned it. Make sure that's not you. He paid a price for you to love. Love is seeking not your own and taking no account of a suffer wrong. You stay unveiled so you can go to Jesus. The only way you're going to become love is not because you want to be. It's because he makes you that way because you yield to him. You get alone. You talk to him about it. You talk to him about following him and not being moved like he wasn't moved. Seeing what he sees. Living what he lives. 
And you start communicating that with him. Start telling him your spouse doesn't owe you a thing. That you're done finding your identity through your children. You found yourself in him. And now you're going to love everybody in your life very healthy and very well. And you just start, nobody owes me a thing. I'm on the earth for one reason, to shine. You start talking and praying like that when nobody's looking. Grace starts to come and form your heart into the thing that you desire. And next thing you know, you're a work of grace. And you actually become the thing you're desiring without biting your lip to change. See, you don't do love, you become love. Yeah? Yeah. This is all about becoming. It's a work of grace. It's a place of prayer. You all in? Let's pray. Let's pray. And I'm going to pray just believing we're all in. There's nothing I preach that we can't walk in by grace when it's mixed with faith. And a healthy want to. You make sure you're a want to. Don't be thinking, boy, I hope my spouse is a want to. You make sure you're a want to. Yeah? So, Father, we come to you today and we take these sessions in this word. And I just believe as a room we're saying yes. That you would mold us and you would shape us. We're not going to be stereotyped. Now, I'm just saying this because of things I hear and hear you guys even joke about. Watch this. This is in my heart. We're not going to be stereotyped by the Northeast. We're going to be stereotyped by the kingdom of God. Yeah. We're not here to break a mold. We're not here to even fit a mold. We're just here to become what you always said, what you paid for, and what you've always seen. And God, you're growing us into the truth. And we're kingdom of God way before we're Connecticut. And yet we honor this place and we ask you to ravage this place. We ask you to have your way in our state. But God, thank you for having your way in our lives. I ask that the lives we live, God, would be the loudest sermons we ever preach and that our lives would bring glory to your name. Let there be healing and restoration in homes and marriages. If there's relationships here and you're just listening and you're not even looking to the side at your spouse because it hasn't been that great, why don't you slip your hand into their hand as a sign of saying, hey, I just want you to know I'm hearing this man for me, not you. And I am convicted. Forgive me. And when they do that, when they do that, why don't you squeeze their hand instead of pulling yours away? Why don't you squeeze their hand as to say, ditto. Hey, I'm hearing for me too. Things can change. Thanks for squeezing my hand. And give them an extra little squeeze. And I'm telling you the grace of God will come on your union. And it'll feel fresh and alive. That would be very humble and powerful if you'll do that right now. And God, we just thank you for the redemption of relationships and the restoration of lives, purpose, destiny, and calling, because you're good. In Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. 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 Love you guys. Thank you.